Train the whole backside. That's what we're doing today. So we have a smorgasbord of exercises. <laughs> so we're gonna have a split squat, a stiff leg deadlift, some back work, some bicep work. Why would you do all these exercises together? Well, it depends on what you need. And for my needs, I want something that's gonna train my rectors. I have a little bit of glute work I want today and, and touch on quads. So this technically is kind of a back and hand day with a little bit of quad involved. But we'll go through the session, kind of lay, let you see the layout and why I laid out the way that I did. Let's go. All right, John, big red chair. Yep. Probably go down to 120 after this. Yeah, same. Oh, 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 can I do my right side? Hold <laughs> <laughs> if you want to. <laughs> one big lap, one little lap. <laughs> So Luke and I are hitting single arm pull down. A lot of thought around, hey, the single arm pull down, it's a bit overrated. Just do a normal pull down, you know, stop being so fancy. A lot of people like that external rotation to get in the position to hit some of the more vertical fibers. And that's what you need to think about, that these lat fibers span down the lumbar, but into the more vertical pattern that attach on the iliac crest. So to hit these vertical patterns, these, these fibers, where this lower lat is, we need to be in a position where we can get that arm really close. So where a lot of guys that hit the rear doubles, nothing down here, nothing in the rear lat spreads. This is where this movement applies. Very you good. <laughs> is that touching with a plate? Guy? What? Are there different? Six? Six? There's six on both, right? Oh, almost off my needs. I, I probably need the RDL more than the SLDL for like... Because you need the glute too. Glute. Probably more than ham. I would agree, but I'm not writing your programming. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Just... I sometimes extend to the right. Hmm. I catch a lot of left hamstring tension, so I had to be like really intentional with the descent. Yeah, you're definitely, you're not going in any lumbar flexion either. Yeah. If you went any further, you would. Yeah, to sit back with my hips some, it just maxes out. I'd have to like let it drift out to gain more hip. Come on, Luke. wake up. Come on, Luke. How'd that look? 
Those look good. The bottom felt really controlled. Yeah, I mean, you've been doing this. <laughs> Maybe that's why. It's gotta find your groove with it, right? Yeah, that bottom position, it's like shifts around, like trying to find it, you know? Does it move on you on those racks? Um, if I start with it, like, if I get up to it where I'm going to pull from, it's fine, you know? Yeah. It's more me, like, where am I wanting <laughs> to set this, right? Yep, 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 yep. Had a little more of me, but could get sketchy. You <laughs> so let it drift on that last one. It, uh, the descent of that last one was the furthest out from you that you went. Like, I started close. And then you went, went out, and that felt, like, really good. Maybe a lot, well, you know, when I was setting it down on the last one. Yeah, so the ones I said that's on the money was, like, perfect RDL. That last one that you, I thought you debated going for it. Oh. And then didn't. That bar drifted on oh, you. I was, oh, you were that was me okay. letting it go. I didn't know if you were debating uh, okay. it or not. <laughs> <laughs> no, the decision was made. <laughs> yeah. So you'll see, like, it looks like our end ranges are different because... John's able to get to the rack, and I'm not. But in reality, we're both going to the point where that hip is maximally traveling from the bar for an RDL, and we're stopping at the point before we go into lumbar flexion. I'm just two inches taller than John, and so that stop point for me is different than him, and I also have longer femurs as well. So, double whammy for me. I haven't done this in a bit. I know in the beginning I said, oh yeah, I'm gonna do a Stiff leg deadlift, that was what I had in mind. <laughs> but as like, I go through the logic of needs, I'm like stiff leg deadlift would be great for hamstring more bias and lower back. Really, I need glute. So it really is RDL is really what I, want, I needed. I just had this idea of like wanting to pull from the floor, just more like a preference and <laughs> kind of just enjoyment, but Kind of like uh, the rational logic kicked in, so RDL fits really well. So that's what uh, the setup is today. Come on, get it all the way there. Go. Oh, that was rowdy. Huh? Am I like C1 like popped? Yeah. Right? right when I got in position. So right? You ever have that one pop up there? Like Not feels often. like it echoes through your skull? <laughs> Not often. Okay. <laughs> Can't say yeah, that. No, not at all. Can't say I've experienced that one on the regular. Oh, come on. Three, two, yep. Oh my. So we had the RDL in place, gonna have some spinal erector hit. So now I wanna move, we hit lat, some lower back, move up to the upper back. So do a chest supported T-bar row. Do three sets here. Lower back already has some fatigue in it, so we definitely want something chest brace to lower those 
internal stability requirements and just working on having that full protraction, elevation of scapula, fully retracting it, get all the upper back range of motion that we can out of it. All right, here we go. Three, two, yep, one. What'd you say was after this? A pullover. Huh. So moving for our upper back movement. The last back exercise we're gonna do is a lat pullover. So I go single arm because to get fully externally rotating, keep my elbows close, have a hard time doing it. So I do move to a single arm and I load the lengthen portion. So it's, it's hard to really load the lat with a lot of rows or pull downs to where we can load it when it's fully extended. So we can set up to where that cable hits 90 degrees with the arm and load the lat and drop off as the lat's really hard to get short now that it's fatigued, so we can fully get out everything that we want, lat-wise, fully fatigue it for the session. Over here chilling. Not full boring either. <laughs> Before I got here, I hadn't trained in five days, so that's where I'm at right now. <laughs> I don't know what I was just doing. I I didn't work. I didn't just feel it. I just, <laughs> I don't know. Are you that gone? <laughs> I just did some reps and I'll work this next one. <laughs> work the next one. This is what happens when you film four hours straight before you train. Just on my left side feels so fucked from yesterday. I heard. I did. I heard the rumor. I just didn't know if it was a finalized thing or not. Yeah, I was told it was a final thing. Are they changing the date? Are they bringing it back to the old date? I don't know about that. That's terrible. <laughs> well, I like my rec fins attached, so. <laughs> I know you play in a different ball game, but. Here goes nothing. Left leg first, because it's the worst leg.
that felt good. Fire. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, find a chair now. <laughs> Feel good, don't they? Yeah, it's a little, a little shaky. But it's good. Yeah, yeah. I think that'll be a good one I keep in. This is the only thing that keeps me squatting. I mean, there's a couple of things, but like, I think there's a large transfer. Yeah, buddy. Whoop. Whoa, come on. Come on, Luke. Let's go. Uh, come on. Uh. Whoa, that's a wrap. There it is, yeah. You stuck? <laughs> Wheelchair in. <laughs> oh, that felt good. It's so much like accumulation so fast of like blood. It's like I'm good in 14, 15. It's like I hit 10. I'm like, yeah, these are good. You're right. Yeah. And then it kicks in. Like, oh no. <laughs> like you can barely lock your quad out. You're like, oh. <laughs> and it's shaking though, and you're like, my leg might snap, I don't know. <laughs> I think that's something good to remember, like, too. On those later reps, like, being patient with that descent so that you find that right position because of that stability component, playing a larger role as you fatigue. And finding that bottom position is so important here, especially if you're, like, biasing one direction or the other. In that fatigue state, so. Taking that hesitation to really ensure that descent ends where it's supposed to be. Yeah. Reintegrate the proper pattern. Come on. Come on. Go. Yeah, good rap. Should have done this leg first. <laughs> oh. This glute's really tight. It yeah. lacks the internal rotation. So it wants to stay out. Should have started with it. I just Did I went into my right leg, you know, I was like, oh shit. So, doing a rear foot elevated split squat can really set this up to make it quad focused or glute focused. Elevating that back leg, it pitches your weight forward, so it's easier to hit, sit back and hit more glute, as long as you keep a little bit torso lean. Now you could set this up with front foot elevated and leaning into lift and pushing back to make it more quad focused. For this being more of our posterior chain day, set up rear foot elevated to really hit a lot of ass. I might think I'll just do uh, two here. Suss that from there, yeah? I agree. Week I, one for both of us. Three would, sounds stupid, but three would fuck me up, I think, yeah. <laughs> oh, RFE round two. Challenger Luke Miller. Win what? the RFE. <laughs> uh, come on. Oh. 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 
Yes, come on. Control. Drive. Oh, again. Oh, that's the one. That one looked better. Did it feel better? Way better. I felt more midfoot. I like these because it keeps me very like goal oriented for biceps. Because a lot of times it'll just be like log the weight. And I don't even count reps and shit. Just <laughs> I need a bit more accountability and this this does it. Ah, oh, that's it. Motherfuck. God, that shot. Hup. Oh. Come on. Let's Hup. go, Luke. Come on. Oh, that's it. Fuck. Oh. How heavy is that? Heavy enough. Come on, don't be a bitch. God. So finishing out biceps. I like doing a rest pause set on my bicep work. Keeps me goal oriented on bicep training. So sometimes at the end of the session, arms aren't the biggest priority in my training. So sometimes I'll just log the load, make sure I'm getting a connection. But rest pause, I have rep target goals. So that's why I preferentially like it. And if you're low on time, it's a great time saving technique too. Still have plenty of effort to get good stimulus. So hit that for three sets. Went on to a hammer strength, single arm, just using a rope. Hit some brachialis, round out the arm training. And that wraps up the full session. So 
y'all have any questions, comments, leave them down below, and we will talk to you next time.